When it comes to members of a metal band, bassists are the best. How could that be? It's a long story, so stick around. For Reaper Metal Productions, I am Reaper, and this is Hellcast. And this episode, like every episode, is brought to you by the good people at Hell's Headbangers. So, joining me as always, J Dog. Yeah, maybe that, but one of the other guys needs to join you sometime then too. Yeah, yeah maybe. One, one of the good people. Well, those those people have Eric's been on Chase, Les. Why though? Was it just audio? Oh, uh, it was just the audio days, yeah. They didn't see what they looked like then. Yeah, no, did not get to see what they looked like. But uh, I'll tell you what the website looks like just because, you know, you need that extra reminder. There's, uh, remember, that's $1 CD sale going on. Moloch is in there. Moloch's getting a lot of attention. Sold three Molochs today. I'd like to think because of Hellcast, right? Whatever are they talking about? I'm talking about that ding, that video that came up right there. Yep. Or that full-length episode, because there's also awesome Finnish metal bands, just like this. Evil Angel. Grey Violator that we were talking about. So yes, that's right. Reaper Metal Productions has releases, and Grey Violator is one of them. All those releases can be purchased at Reaper Metal Productions Bandcamp. But hey, if you want, you're already shopping for that awesome CD sale at Hell's Headbangers. Well, then by all means, just get it from Hell's Headbangers, and you're like, I want to support you, Reaper. You already are. But if you want to get digital and all that, just go to the Bandcamp. Links into the description. So let's get down to it. How in the world are bass players the best when it comes to members of the band. Well, I think because, sure, when you're just taking it for what it is, that they're just the guy that plays bass, usually that's why they're not the best, is they're just the guy that's sitting there in the corner, doom, 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 you know, playing something that you don't know. But if you want to be a musician and kind of argue the fact, then it's just like, well, n- number reason number one is drummers are just... Boosh, boosh, Nothing. So you need some sort of melody. Put the bass player in there. What is the rhythmic instrument? That's bass. So you really have no riff, no foundation for a drummer who's the second guy to kind of get people dancing to feel your music. You need the bass. And then you throw in your guitar, then you throw in your vocals, and then, sure, it gets fun and flashy. But that's the point. So it's fun, it's flashy. So if you think about King Diamond, there's somebody who could be like, all right, well... What do you mean? He's larger than life. He's a great figure. Sure. But I think about King Diamond, and I think, all right, well, he's just a vocalist. If he's got to go solo, he's got to hire a band. He's not bringing Hank Sherman along. He's He did bring Timmy Grabber along for, for Merciful Fate. Yeah, he did bring Sherman, but uh, Michael Dunner, too. Yeah. So, like, he's just always kind of got to bring his people along. He can't do it alone. Yeah, where, but neither can the bass player. Well, but the bass player sometimes does, because then I think no, of well, bass Midnight. Player does it alone. Well, Midnight does. I mean, no, he doesn't. He plays drums. On the recordings? Yeah, but uh, that's just because he knows how to play every instrument. You could say the fact, like... Joel Grind does too. He's not known as like a bass player. No, he is not. But he's. The, but that's just an example of how, in that analogy, when you're looking at the bass player from you know a standpoint of like digging into the statement, that's one of the things you find. There's always more to it. Then there's not just a guy that thuds in the corner. So like another example would be like you know you think about Venom. Now like mm-hmm. Kronos, of course, isn't playing every instrument as opposed. To the previous but he's example, the most recognized guy in the band, kinda, yeah, yeah, I would say so. Because this example more is of a uh, Angus Young being the like mascot of ACDC kind of thing, where he's not the singer. Because the singer is usually what the first guy that yeah, he's the front. Well, that's why you call the front man. See, I don't agree that the bass is the most important instrument. Like you said, I think uh, you can maybe argue the angle that sometimes the bass player is a smarter guy in the band mm-hmm. and, and for and on. Um, and rides it along. However, it kind of depends on what you're uh, talking about, what style, too, because a lot of what you were saying, too, before you brought up like bands like Motorhead. Yeah. And obviously, Lemmy's larger than life. But that's, you know, so you got Motorhead, you brought up ACDC. Um, Granted, ACDC is a guitar player <laughs> that would be the kind of the focal but it was, point. Uh, it was Angus and Malcolm. Uh, who did bass on? Uh, oh, God. He, he was ever changing. Oh, okay. it was yeah. just Angus, the young brothers, just guitar both. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, um, 
the example doesn't always have one example, but it's, and that's the point. Like when they're when the bass player is just more than the guy that plays bass, the frequency play I call them frequency players. Where like you were saying, like I usually don't even hear the bass. Like a lot of times I don't. That's player. why uh, that's why I disagree with that statement. The people that I've always noticed that usually made that statement were bass players themselves. It's like well, it's easy to say when that's your. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but you play both, so you kind of get a little bit past to where you'd yeah. be uh, not as biased. But what I've noticed is strictly bass players that they would uh, say that. Uh, but yeah, no, I don't agree with that statement because, um, like I said, I mean, there's a lot of bands that uh, had, you know, like look at like uh, Sabbath, mainly known for Ozzy. Not oh, of saying, course. You know, and uh, look at, um, uh, like uh, you did mention Cannibal Corpse and Alex Webster. Course Garden is the front man, but people that diehard Campbell Course fans exactly. uh, um, recognize Webster the most because he does like the most work. But it's because he's also doing other shit. He's he's writing the songs. He came up with a name. Exactly. Name. Uh, but uh, but, but now you just, get more on target where uh, what my but point But as far is. as like uh, sometimes the bass really stands out if it sounds like I'll actually behind you, the Exhumed Slaughter Cult. I love how the bass sounds like. It's a distorted bass. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love how the bass sounds on, on that record. Um, and the reason why I say bring that up specifically is because. Like you said, there's a lot of times like I either don't hear the bass on the album, or it's kind of like it's indifferent. Like it's not yeah. like, you know, um, it's just not that. Like even like like a band like Dia side, I don't think it's if, if it was Glenn playing it or if it was one of the Hoffman's bands playing it. I don't think I would have liked it or like disliked it anymore. Great example then, because if it is more of like where it's not in, if the, if the bass isn't the best in the fact of how he plays it and brings to the table as the bass player. Then Glenn Benton's an example that he's very much the focal point of the band. Mm -hmm. So there you go. And he got bass players. Now, of course, he's the vocalist of it, but that's just more of the complexity of what this whole conversation is about. That, okay, he's not just the bass player. Now he's the vocalist. Now he's the guy that kind of goes up there and then he ruffles feathers. And he's able to ruffle feathers and be more badass about it because. And I think because he's the bass player. See, I always know? assume, to correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't play an instrument, but I always assume that the reason the, uh, the singer. If he does another instrument, it's mostly bass. I mean, obviously, there's guitars and there, there's mm -hmm. dr even drummers like King Folly and the uh, uh, Exciter. Um, does Exciter bass player? No, Exciter plays drums and uh, the not the not the, oh, like, oh. the shitty albums. I'm talking about the good albums. Okay, Exciter uh, he does drums and vocals. So I mean, there's ex other exceptions, but I'm saying usually if the singer plays an instrument, it's usually the bass. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe if you took a tally, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's usually bass. In a, uh, would you say that? Like, for example, well, obviously more than drums, but would you say there's more bass player and vocalists than there's guitar and vocalists? I I would say so, I, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um. Okay. Well, then let's think about it. You were about to say like from a standpoint of like playing it. If you did both, but the reason the re like yeah, yeah you're about to ask me is it easier? Would you say? Well, or is that's that what you're what I was going to say. The, re the reason I always speculate that was the case is just because uh, not that it's yeah. <laughs> Easier is not the word, maybe more forgiving. For example, you don't okay. have to worry about doing guitar solos and singing. And if you fuck up on guitar, like really fuck up, even if you don't know the uh, song that well, like yeah. in the audience, live I'm talking, yeah. I think most people would notice. As opposed to the bass, you kind of get away with it. You know what I mean? So there's more room for error. Okay. So when you're singing in, because, you know, doing two things at once is obviously hard, harder. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I always assume that the bass player, when he does another thing, if he does, um, if it's going to be the vocals as well. That's why I assume it's because it's more forgiving. It's a little bit easier. Okay, so I would think that, all right, at, what I would say as a musician to that, while, of course, it would be easy to think that, yeah, like playing a solo at the same time is hard to do and sing and, the, and then just playing a riff, but at that point, when you're really an established musician, it even going, ooh, the craziest Yngwie Malmsteen's kind of just second nature at that point that it's mm -hmm. it's not as hard as it you would have You just have it so dialed in your head. Yeah, because it the because the first order of business is playing and singing at the same time. Like, mm -hmm. getting through that. Once you get through that, you can pretty much do anything. I'll no be honest, this is not bad. I, in a way. I, I still wonder to this day, like, um, now, don't get me wrong, not, like, take, like, a band, like, I don't want to mention, don't want to mention, like, like, Ghost or something, when they're on their debut album doing a tour. Mm hmm that would this would probably be easy, but I've always wondered like like bands that have multiple albums in general, even like one or two albums, but whatever, have a full set list. Like he, the singer just alone, how he remembers all the words. I mean, it's kind of like oh, it's kind of stupid. It's like I understand yeah. you drill in your head, but even myself, I just draw blanks on albums that I really know for years. Yeah, like I can't imagine like a band like Cannibal, for example. They, they're doing twenty five, thirty songs because they got so many songs. Right, and. It's not like, and the reason why I say like, like ghosts, that, that's kind of, in my opinion, like singing that, 
that stuff and even made and stuff. That's kind of like easy. Like, do you, do you ever hear how fast like Corpse Grinder sings some of those? And the, like, the, there's a, there's like lots of fucking words. Like, it's not just um, you know, you know how the ghost lyrics some of them are I really short. You. So I it's not you. that much to remember. I don't know. Like, well, just kind of like look behind you. Those exhum like lyrics, even they're long. Each the song, yeah, you know, there's yeah. a lot of words. So even like yeah, man, like exhumed. I I personally don't know if I would have the talent, no matter how much I practice, if I can remember all the words to all the songs of a full like say they do 12, 15 songs. Well, you if I could do it. I don't and and fuck. I don't know how you achieved the the body type you did. I I, I couldn't keep the, to the regiment and and to the you know to, mm. to scheduling and, and I mean a lot of the stuff that you do. There's a lot that goes into then just going to the gym. And I yeah. don't think I had the discipline at least. Mm. So I think it's all kind of a discipline thing. I kind of like you said, like I said, you know, when it comes to the multi instrument, you know, playing and singing at the same time. I think that, like I said, it, you don't. You don't become good at it until you just have second nature. So no matter what you're doing, the second nature. What does that of, go with singing too? You know, like remember the lyrics? Because well, that's like a memory. All right. Part. So here, here's another thing. So because in that in that conversation of you know playing multi things, I thought of another badass frontman bass player. That's kind of usually the focal point, and that's Getty Lee of Rush. Granted, like everybody from Rush kind of has a light. I thought the drummer was really looked Neil at. Neil Peart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he like he's such a great lyricist. Oh, another one I know. I, like I only know is from uh, Lou. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, is uh, he? Uh, he'd always talk about who is the bass player. Uh, what is his name? Uh, from Overkill. Okay, yeah, D- uh, Didi. Is, so is he considered Didi like? Dirty? A, I like don't what? know. I wouldn't really. I, I mean, I guess in a way, he's he's not on every album, is he? Yeah, he is. He's on every record. Yeah. So it's like just a, him and Bobby, the only original members. Yeah, yeah. Rat Skates is gone, and he was kind of your guy that was like okay. Really so those are the only two original, at least from that DVD. I knew. That, okay, I, yeah. Um, all right. But uh, but so like so so back to Getty Lee though like so he's a bass player vocalist and then focal point of Rush and one of the other things that he also does I might have some of this slightly wrong but like they have keyboards like he'll be playing bass singing and then doing keyboards with his feet but you're so ref- like you a know, band you're referring to like that um do you ever notice that like a lot of the examples I mean Motorhead's even kind of pushing it too because Motorhead was in the seventies did you notice that a lot of the examples are kind of like old and what i mean by that is they're pushing towards that was like you brought up and i've always known that is uh that was the jazz mentality like the bass the most important yeah. instrument yeah so but the, a lot of the examples you're using that kind of like falls short if we're talking about a lot of death metal and black especially well, actually, does, bla- yeah. especially black metal hell who's it even a fuck who is even a black metal um recognized bass player like like a recognized player not i know the bass player in the band well like, i was like an actual recognized as a new bass player yeah like, uh, good in black metal. i can't even I mean, you got like Necro Butcher, but he's that. Well, I think he is a good example, though. And and we did this off camera. And so, like, way to really lead the example, by, by the way. But yeah, so yeah, Necro Butcher. I think, well, I think you argued that it's just like, well, of course he's going to remain in the spotlight because he's the only originator that's actually alive. Well, Hell and Hell Hammer. Yeah. 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 So, you don't have much to choose from. It's kind of hard there. But in a way, he's kind of like I don't know. Like let's let's challenge uh, Google then and uh, black metal bass players. Like if it, they have like a famous one, like who's known? I mean, like known for you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, what's his uh, Necro Butcher? So like, mm-hmm. is Necro Butcher just make a, a guy go- that plays? Like, is he not? Is he known as like a bass player? Bass player? Or is he just so happened to be the guy that played bass for a band called Mayhem that got popular? I think he's you know so I mean? happened a to difference. be. A- but I, I, I was gonna keep. I was gonna make a simple assessment. Is Necro Butcher more like doing interviews and stuff than Hellhammer is? I mean, his name already oh, narrow. His name already kind of narrows him out. Where Hellhammer, you have to say Hellhammer inter- interview and be more specific mm-hmm. because it's gonna the band's gonna come up and so there's that. But I mean, kind of yeah. So there you go. I think my point's kind of improving because like there's. Necro Butcher, like there's not so much here on Hellhammer that. But going like back I to said, as far Butcher, as like, mayhem, doing more as stuff. far as mayhem, even like who was the most recognized guy in the band would be Euronymous. Um, Second of that would be Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that. Uh, but but fuck, man. Now you get, now you really got me challenged. Uh, as far as a black metal bass player recognized, yeah, I can't even really name like you know like who would be like. No, because there's a lot of just one man bands. So like, but that's cheating to make that, you know, analogy. Yeah, but work. I'm talking about bands like Immortal, Emperor. Yeah, like, no. The, the, what the, was that? Not... Yeah, yeah, Immortal, uh, a bat. Well, does he play guitar or? Vocal? I think well, Ish- he he was a but, bass player. Who's the uh, the Ishan or um? What's the other guy? No, he got. Can't pronounce his name. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, I think he was doing, he's funny. He's actually ordered from us before too in the past. 
Oh uh, yeah, he does that. He does that. Um, that label. But too. like, don't worry um, about me. And I'm a big Immortal fan. Um, right. but I never recognized him at all for just bass. You know what I mean? I just I like the albums. I never said like, man, that's got some killer bass. Like I said Exhumed Slaughter Call. I like the bass on that though a lot. The bass sound. Uh, I never like. I'm not saying it didn't need the bass or wasn't important. It just it didn't just jump out at me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, what I always thought was unique about Immortal was his vocals. You know, very unique. Yeah, and I can um, I can see why you would say that. But let's look it up. So like, let's see, because I think a bath, a bath, a bat, a bat. What I, I, I've name? always called him bath, a bath. Well, I, I thought that's how you pronounce. Bath. I could be wrong. Yeah, Maybe no, I'm I wrong. just for some for sec for a second there, I finally real. Like, I could ask him. My, I finally heard it in my head for what it was worth. A bath. Well, like, you, you need to take Mir- a bath. Mir- 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 Chase but, uh, met the guy and got a picture with him. Could have asked him. Well, no, but well, whatever. But it, like, it doesn't matter for as far as this goes. What so, does he do? He's a just, bath. Just, he, yeah, vocals and bass player just, on the first recording. Well, so go, go to uh, go to Battles of the North. Does he play guitar and bass on that one? Okay, I, Battles of the North is like that's my that's my favorite. Um, one. That's my, maybe he does bass and vocals. I thought he was maybe so does Battles guitar. of the North. So, poem. Let's check it out. Um, he he probably does do bass and vocals, huh? Bass, vocals, drums, guitar. Oh, he does. He but he's just, not like he's lead guitar player on yeah, that. Yeah, so. just the two guys on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has their lineups weird. The albums, it's uh, it's. It was, I don't think it was ever more than three guys. But on the early albums. Well, so uh, all this, so all this did was support my conversation, though. That's the point. So he's a bass player by trade, vocalist, and then when he does the two man album, then all of a sudden now he he's all. doing it all. He's like the bigger contributor. Like I challenge you to find. So now let's flip the coin and like, what are uh, a notable guitar player? Like in uh, just like in just like in metal. anything, I mean like um, first Tony comes, Iommi, Tony Iommi. So yeah, like there you go, <laughs> perfect example. Like he, would you say our dad knows who Tony Iommi is? He does, but if he said the name, he might be like, huh? But he, yeah, but yeah. he knows him by default for he sure. Is he's that like guy self. at work, or I, I, th- he he knows who he is, but maybe not as <laughs> clear as he should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. But he would know Ozzy in a blink of an eye. 100%. Right. So I think Tony Iommi is more of you are either into it or not and know it for that, where like he would know who Lemmy is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, of course, we're just describing front men that are larger than life. So, yeah. But, um, but I think just, that's just what Tony Iommi, an, a very important guitar player, is in the equation of this example. So, like, let's get, but let's get better than that. Like, Inve Malmsteen. Like, I, I don't think that he would know who the hell Inve Malmsteen is, first and foremost. Do you? No, that's a, like a, he, he would know of it, right? I don't know. That's a good wonder. I think, Dad, if you're watching, I think he, I think he would. He know definitely ain't watching. Well, he, he definitely no, isn't even watching like, uh, this For video. example, like Motorhead, uh, Motorhead, he was uh, he, he was a little stumped at first when I asked him. He wasn't stumped. He knew it, but he he knew it about as well as I know. Um, <laughs> Molly Hatchet. No, I don't know. Uh, better than that. Um, <laughs> mm, about as well as I know Tool. Oh God. Well, because you know I've heard it and I hated it. But yeah. if, you, if if someone had it on their car now, I wouldn't know what it is. They're like, you know what this is? They would tell me. I'm like, oh, yeah, no wonder yeah. I don't like it. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> I do, I do. But why don't we draw on a blank for like memorable? Well, I guess because we're trying to equate it to our, memorable our guitar dad. players, memorable guitar players, but like larger than life guitar players. Um, you know, Ingve Malmsteen. Uh, uh, let's get a death metal guy. That's in what I'm there. trying to think. Um, that's what I'm trying to think. It was a death metal um, one. That's really known for. Oh my God! Brain fart moment. That's for damn sure. I mean, does like uh, does like for example, death metal like would um, I mean, I think he would, but he does so much other shit. Would like like Eric Rutan count? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So does is Eric a like uh, uh Hate Eternal right? Yeah, he might play bass in Hate Eternal. He does guitar or he does vocals. But he, does, he might do maybe he does. It's guitar vocals. So and then he owns his own studio. I just want to see if Eric. Rutan, no, what is he on the first down? No, that's the only one. I, I only like the first down. Was Eric Rutan first fit the bass? player analogy he might i think he does play bass i could be wrong on that yeah not so much though he's kind of just a yeah but mostly guitar yeah but he's it, definitely it's not, uh, um it's a good yeah, example i would say he's a, a i would say example. he's a well-known death metal guy whether people like i mean i'm not like i said hey eternal i just like the first album yeah. cocking the throne i actually like that album a lot um the morbid angel albums he's on and mm, didn't really like but um he's on morbid angel albums is he on the albums he definitely oh there you them. go they're trey azagoth Another good oh, yeah, guitar yeah. player. Yeah, probably, actually, he's probably the biggest. But death then metal now, player. now go back to the. Would bass you say, actually, let's go say that. I would say Trey Azagoth is probably. Would you, just, would you say that's the most well recognized like guitar god of death metal? I don't know. Um, 
I would say I yeah. I mean, I would say yeah. I'll, with this brain fart still intact, he sure as hell is. Um, I, w- I would say that he is. Uh, so let's just so let's check Trey's creden- credentials real quick. I mean, don't he wrong, a, he's on some seriously bad albums. Well, but, do but does he have any bass in his closet? I've never known him I to play bass. Yeah, he, maybe on the demo or something, but I don't think um, I don't know him too. Definitely not on the albums. So, but there, so there. But okay, so there. So this is at least. It's leading the conversation. Like, we're doing a true-to-life example. Like, boom. We didn't provide tons of examples of guitar players, but here we are. Guitar players that are known in a band, and all they do is play guitar. I mean, Trey had a little bit of keyboard in there, but, like, you know, it's not what made him successful. So, like, it's guitar, and, like, that's his. he's a one-trick pony. Like, it's always the bass player. Like, maybe they're not always, like, you know, Venom, Kronos. He's not... You know, doing a zillion things. He's not playing drums, but then he he's a speaker but he's the, for the he's band. He's the most known yeah. guy in the band for sure. You know, there's there's the back patch that Athen, you know, Midnight Athenar and Hell mimicked. Like he's always just kind of the the focal point. He's the equivalent to Angus Joel, Young Joel at that Grind. point, or he's just Joel Grind. But you know, Joel was then a first and foremost uh, guitar player before then. But he's like, doing bass, bass now, isn't he? Bass, I don't know. Live. I haven't. When did we saw him live? What was he doing? Uh, <laughs> I, well, that's what I'm saying. I want to say he was doing. I, I don't remember. Yeah, I had. Yeah, could gone either way, and it was. I just saw him whatever last year, whatever. Well, speaking of which, um, because uh, I mean, I think I. I mean, do you do you need more examples? Do you kind of get the point? Do you are you no, starting I get to the, agree? I get the point. I just think that sometimes maybe you get the uh, bass player just happens to be the most intelligent guy in the band, and that he's uh, pick up on other things. <laughs> but I don't think it's the most important instrument. I don't agree with that. All right. Well, all right, all right. well, yeah, I don't think it's the most important instrument like that. No, no, no. Because no. in a lot of just, just heavy metal in general, yeah. like the, by default, when you take a metal music, and I'm talking about just like your old granny anymore, yeah. like <laughs> what they think and what it's symbolized. I'm talking about in any cheese ball movie too. What is it? It's a guitar that does solos like these crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, that like rock and roll or heavy metal. That's the the universal symbol for the instrument is is the guitar, is the uh, electric guitar. Yeah, yeah. For, for metal music. No, I, I don't. I don't. I'm. I'm not. So, I'm, I'm not making that. And kind. I, whether that you want to consider that right or wrong, that's just that. That I mean, I didn't. I didn't choose that. That's just the way it is. No, no, no. I'm. Not, I'm not making that claim. That you know, I was just saying that. Like, ba- like just no. Just to put it in summary, bass is the best instrument, as I worded it. Just because it's like it's the more there's just more to it every time that somebody stands out more. Because otherwise, no, they're just in the corner, do do do, repeating what the no, guitar I definitely plays. Like the bass, how bass sounds on uh, Repulsion, horrified too. Scott and Carlson's Scott Carlson, but like now he's now he's a way smaller example, but he still should be bigger. Kind example. of, I think that. I mean, like I said, whole Repulsion Horrified. That's one of my all time favorite records ever. Well, he should be ever. bigger because he is very much kind of a guy that went on and did, you know, uh, Cathedral. He, you know, he's he, in Death Breath. Yeah, because I guess the point in his example is Plus, that he is he's pretty only, much just always playing well, bass. Not only that, but he is the only original guy playing the Repulsion shows, I believe, right? Um, Get a fucking Dave Grave and. There's no Dave Grave. No, I thought uh, it was a Zoom. I thought that, it was a Zoom that, that was helping you, him out now. Well, you got that transvestite in the band, whoever the fuck that is. It's definitely not one of the original members. Yo, I, for, I don't know. I don't. I remember um, um, that person's name, but um, I think that he, she, or whatever might have been an ex- wasn't exhumed. Maybe that's where the reference. But it's um, Harvey told me the uh, story behind it. I don't. I don't know. I don't know that dude. Uh, but uh, well, I looked up Joel Grind then just to, to answer your question of what he's doing now, and uh, it was saying uh, I mean I just clicked away from it um, that he's like got bass up front now, tw- 2015 to present, so I'm going to assume that means yeah, that sure that's, that's what he's doing. I just don't remember. But he's also got yeah. guitar, 2015. So, I don't know. The, Maybe the just verdict, guitar on the album and bass line. Yeah, so the verdict's not out. But I was going to Is leave. Is that a new album? Yeah, yeah. What's, so, what's the album called? It's called uh, Primal Future 2019. When does that come out? Uh, a digital track just came out. So we're What's gonna, the release date? Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know other than make. I didn't noises. realize one was coming, because I, I, I what is love. This? If you know, you know me. I love Tots Holocaust. Yes, hour. I do. That's why I was. Uh, that well, that's why we're gonna leave the show here because, uh, well, first and foremost, uh, to put our 
to put our wonder to rest here on the bass player being the most the import the best instrument. It's not because it's the most important into the, when the, the music actually plays. The most drawing play. figure of the band, you it's, say. Well, it's the best when they they are the drawing figure of the band. Like that's it's like I said, it's the various examples. It doesn't mean that like they're Kronos that he's not just more of like a symbol and does a lot of interviews and he's in a lot of photos. Where then when you make it Athenard, then he does play every instrument. There's just always more something it, more interesting. About about them when they are the focal point of the band is all I'm saying and that's what makes them the best because at the end of the day no yeah everybody's gonna re- recognize metal for guitar vocals drums and then I don't even think anybody bats an eye to bass and that's why I'm that's why we're having this subject is to redeem the bass players because yeah got a pump boy here gotta give him a pat on the back every well, once in a while I mean because I am that I'm that I think I'm a product of that system that I just said because I play guitar first and then it's just like well we need a bass player and then it's like oh you do bass and then well you I have heard this that. I've heard guitar players uh that play guitar and they they, they play bass pick up a bass and then they yeah. switch over to bass because they just enjoyed it more um I definitely so you go ask, I've asking heard a, people say that I've so asking about that. it live I've definitely had an affinity more to it live um wanted to yeah okay uh no it, I've, I've heard a few guys say that it's um, just more fun because like you know the nun slaughter days or just well especially crucify mortals like it it's yeah it is kind of easier to sing and play uh, just because it's like because it's you know you're the unit that's like leading the show it's mm-hmm. like for me i'm like i'm sitting there keeping an eye on the merch stands it's like i know that once the show's over i'm gonna have to go run over there so it's easier to kind of toss the bass in the corner yeah. with the guitar maybe it has a whammy bar on it or something so it's got all these intricacies like you just gotta wait you know so one of the or or easily yeah it goes out of tune Too a little bit time. easier yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's easier to just stand out to the side like of a bass i mean it is in certain stage circumstances so is it harder to break a string to on a bass i would say so that's for sure. i don't think i've ever seen someone way thicker i just was saying because uh I didn't. I don't think I've ever seen anyone break a uh, bass string on stage, like live. Uh, I've I've done it. Have you? I don't. I mean, it was I by about, the end of the tour, I've definitely seen uh, guitar players break strings on stage. Hell, Dia uh, did with the last time they were here. Remember, do you Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, no, so that definitely happens, and and yeah, sometimes. And it was at the end of the tour. By the time the bass string gets that old, but they're that thick. Yeah, the, um, I, I know that. Yeah, they're much thicker. But in that sense, when I did break the string. That's kind of the point of it being easier live. It's not so much because the the instrument is. Granted, if you're just like one of those guys just playing the root note and then just do, 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 do the whole time while the guitar is doing all this crazy stuff, then it is easier in that sense. But it's also that if you broke a string and you're quick on your music, you could be like, all right, well, then I'll just play it up here. It'll it'll be, you know, what was once will be ding, 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 because you got to play it higher. But at least yeah. it's better to be ding, 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 and maybe playing the chord of it to still make it heavy than to not make it through that song at all is the point there. And it's quicker to do that on a bass than it is a guitar. Uh, I would think. So well, I recognize guy if he's talking about death metal is you don't you don't like him, I mean, but I, I love him. It's my boy uh my boy uh Will from Mortician. Yeah. Like you recognize like does he program the drums, or would you say no, that's Roger? Raj. Does? That, that's that's Rod. Now you get the diversity, the complexity of this question. So I encourage you definitely in the comments. Like, do you defy my example? Is bass not the the best instrument when it's presented in this way? Or maybe you got better ways of proving it or disproving it. Or maybe you're just totally. Or lost. better examples too. Give us some more. Give yeah. us some more uh, in the comments too. Leave leave some more who you consider. Not your favorites, like who's considered like guitar, guitar uh, gods of like death metal. I'm not talking fucking your ZZ Top and all that. Like I said, Eric Rutan, Trey Oz. I think who's bigger than Trey Ozagoth? Like not in your opinion. Like for example, I like Cannibal Corpse more than I do Morbid Angel. Yeah. Jack Owens isn't as known as a guitar god as like Trey Ozagoth. Then I would say that David Vincent outweighs him, and he's a bass player. So there's he's that. Folks, but yeah. to get it back in track and leave it with that, there's plenty there. Uh, I hope that uh, you know. You can chime into that conversation as it would be. But I also was going to leave it with, hey, it's, hey J-Dog, do you want to hear the new Toxic Holocaust? But I don't have a pair of headphones for you today, oh, so no I'm just going to queue it up here right here and show you that Toxic Holocaust on Bandcamp. I'll leave a link in the description because we like Toxic Holocaust Shit, we here. Can do it if, you, if people want to see, look. Uh, well, what do you think of the cover? I don't like it. I was, I was yeah. So, well, there you go. That's we, all. Could do, we could do a uh, people want to see a reaction video. I'll of do the new uh, toxic holocaust. Two, uh, yeah, I'm sure HH is slow ass. It'll take forever to get it. I'll go out and buy it because I'm sure uh, you have a vinyl player. I can hook up h- headphones, right? Yeah. Relapse usually does special vinyl colors, like mm-hmm. hundred or so. And I, for my 
favorite bands like Hemorrhage, Exhumed, Toxic Holocaust. I try to buy them. Like I buy because they yeah. want some directly in the mail order. So now that I know it's coming out, I'll I'll uh, I'll buy one from Relapse because I because I really want one of the first hundred colors for me. We can we can uh, if people want to see a reaction video, I'll I'll say my first listen for well, Hellcast. Or we can just bring headphones next time and listen to the one digital track. Why not the album? Okay, maybe the, maybe we'll, they'll have a stinker. We'll do, what a stink, do you want? What do you want? Have a stinky mole. There you go. There. What do you want us to do? Should we do the album? Should we wait for the yeah. album? Or should we do I'll the one digital track? We can track. look at it together. I won't even open it. Okay. We can look at it. Check out the packaging. Look at this crappy cover. Hopefully the LP cover is better. Maybe that's just a CD cover. <laughs> uh, we'll give it a you know. Yeah. There you go. I'll well, give my honest opinion. I'm like, I got ripped. There you go. There There's you a go. lot to talk about in the comments of this video. Yeah. Well, until then, we will talk to you next time.